Welcome back, Gamecock fans, to another Touchdowns to Home Runs Gamecock segment. So signing day was yesterday, and we all know the storyline for the Gamecocks right now. After the Gamecocks fired Will Muschamp, even before we fired Will Muschamp, we had many, 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 many commits decommit. Like, our class this year, to start off, the 2021 class wasn't anything special. It wasn't anything that we had, especially last year. The 2020 class, we had a really good class. The 2019 class was pretty good, too. This class to start off with wasn't overall the greatest, but even after, like, during the whole must champ thing, it got even worse. It got continually worse, where we just started losing everyone that we had committed lots of four stars that we had they all decommitted we have no four stars right now lots of three stars just everyone wanted out of the program and we had a ton of decommits but yesterday was signing day and we were able to hold on to some guys and right now so I'm getting all my information off of 24 7 if I'm talking recruiting I always get my information off 24-7. It's either 24-7 or Rivals. Personally, 24-7 has always been my favorite and my go-to spot. So that's where I'm getting all these rankings. So if there's a guy that you hear me say, oh, he's a three-star, but you're like, oh, no, I've heard he's a four-star. Remember, I'm using the 24-7 composite rankings here. Right now, the Gamecocks sit at 107th in all of college football out of 130 teams and 14th dead last in all of the SEC Obviously not the spot that you want to be in at all, but again, there is reasoning behind this. It's not just because no one wants to come play for our program. We're in the middle of a coaching change. There's a lot going on on our team before this, so people were just like, with the uncertainty coming up with our team without having a coach, no one was going to really commit to South Carolina and want to get in the program in a time where the program's going through a new phase. So now that we have a head coach, now that he's going to hopefully bring in a new OC, DC, bring in a whole new staff, we can jump back on to the recruiting board and start getting pulling some more three stars, maybe pull a four star or two. I think a five star is a bit of a reach, but who knows? I think we really we got to get a couple four stars at least, but really maximize the three stars out because then again, stars really only mean something for the recruiting. Like once you get on the field, the star next to your name means absolutely nothing. You look at a guy named Kevin Harris two years ago. He was only a three-star, and now this year he led the SEC in rushing. The stars next to your name mean absolutely nothing when you actually go out there and hit the field. It All that matters is who plays better, who's able to outperform the guy across from him on the other team. That's all that really matters. Your stars go at the window then, but it's just reassuring for fans and the team and everything when they're able to get guys who are under a high caliber performance rate in high school. It's just nice to see that on your team and coming the talent coming into your team. But then again, I said it, stars mean nothing when you hit the field. So South Carolina right now, 107th in all of college football, 14th dead last in the SEC. So let's take a look at some of the guys that we have recently recruited that signed yesterday, officially signed. These are guys that are going to be coming to South Carolina 2021 for next season and suiting up in the garden and black. So our number one player for this class, we have quarterback out of Georgia. We have Colton Gothier. I've seen tons of interviews with this guy. I've seen a lot of him on social media. And it seems like he's really, really already accepted in the program. Like I Ryan Holinsky tweeted out today, Colton Gothier can't wait to get to work or whatever. It looks like he's already built relationships in the program, which is really good to see. Gothier is a three-star quarterback. He has a .8695 composite rating on 24-7, 619th national, 23rd best quarterback, and 53rd in the state of Georgia. He's a, pro, a Georgia. He's a pro-style quarterback. I like this signing. He's going to be a good guy. He's going to be under Doty or Holinsky or whoever it's going to be this year. Uh, depends on who stays. I think Ryan's honestly going to stay. Honestly, I feel like Ryan is going to stay this season, at least till spring, to see what's going on with Coach Beamer and everything. But I, I, right now, Ryan's staying. It looks like he's posted a lot that's been on the brighter side of him staying. Doty's obviously going to stay. Have no clue what the heck Colin Hill's doing. In my opinion, he should transfer and get somewhere where he could get some more playing time because his time in Carolina is up. So Colton Gothier is going to be working under these guys the next coming seasons. I like him. I like... A lot that he's talked about, I like him on 
like that he's already built relationships within the program and everything and he looks like he's got a really good arm so I'm excited to see what this kid can do and hopefully we can get him into some ball games and get him into some situations where he can get some whatever like experience at the college level our next top recruit we have Omega Blake wide receiver three star out of Rock Hill South Carolina anyone out of Rock Hill South Carolina I will take any day of the week because we have recruited some amazing talent out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. One guy being the greatest high school recruit of all time, ranked one on 24-7. Of course, I'm talking about the Jadeveon Clowney, came out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. I really like here how he's a wide receiver that even though that, yes, all of our top guys are all three stars, we need our top guys to be wide receivers because that is where we are most weak right now. We all know it. These coming seasons, we really need some kind of wide receiver to step up. Blake is the 697th player nationally, 108th in his position and nine uh, in the state of South Carolina. Again, I said it, we need wide receivers. We've turned many, many, many three-star wide receivers into good players. I'm pretty sure Debo and Brian Edwards, I don't think they were even four stars. I'm pretty sure both of them were three stars. I don't know what Shy was. I'm pretty sure none of those guys, I know none of those guys were five stars. No question about it. But those guys, like... The stars next to your names, when you look back at a lot of the Gamecocks that have turned into really good players, you look at the stars next to their names, and they're not they're not these five-star players that are like getting highly recruited and everything. They're these three-star players who just go into the program and work harder than everyone else and know that they got something that no one else sees in their talent-wise and are just able to show it when they finally hit the field in college. So, Blake, I'm excited for him to come to South Carolina. I'm excited that we got another player from Rock Hill, South Carolina, because we got a lot of good players coming out of there. So, him I'm excited for. He is our second-best player. By the way, guys, New Carolina merch in the shop right now. Shirts are only $15. Hoodie, $30. Go get cheers. I got Ain't Never Lost a Tailgate. I got lots of Beamer merch. I got some other Gamecocks merch there, so definitely go check it out. I will put the link in the description and in the comments. Check that out. Caleb McDowell is our third highest rated recruit coming into the season. He's from Lee County in Georgia. Running back. Obviously, our running back room is pretty stacked right now. So just adding more talent is only going to make it better. Iron sharpens iron. So it's just going to make it better. He's going to be learning from some of the best in all of college football in Marshawn Lloyd and in Kevin Harris coming up this season. 752nd nationally. You got 45th in his position in the running backs and then 66th in all of Georgia. Again, just adding more depth to the positions, getting him behind guys who know their stuff is going to be really good for him to progress in the game and just make him better another one our fourth recruit overall we have another wide receiver which again is really really good to see some of our higher recruits this uh, class even though that they don't have those huge stars next to their name or their composite isn't that great it's still good that they're wide receivers because that's where we're lacking right now sam reynolds from thompson alabama wide receiver he is 871st nationally, 127th in his position, and then 35th in the state of Alabama, and we know that they're a good football state. Again, any wide receiver, we turn the three-star wide receivers into good players, so I'm really excited to see what he can do, and we just need him, Reynolds and Blake, to step up this season. One of those guys we really need to burst onto the scene because they're going to definitely get the opportunities. We have so many holes on the wide receiver side of the ball right now, so if these guys want the opportunity, it is definitely open for them to go out there. I'm not saying freshman season, go be able to become wide receiver one, but we've seen these other wide receivers that have been three stars burst onto the scene and really become one of the top talents in college football. So that's another guy I'm excited for. Just going through a bunch of the other guys, we got Nicholas Barris, Barrett, defensive tackle from North Carolina. His national ranking is he's not ranked in that. Reynolds, McDowell. Uh, Blake and Gothier were the only guys that we had ranked within the top 1,000 of the national rankings. Barrett is 60th in his position, 48th in the state of North Carolina. After that, you got John Darius Morgan, offensive tackle from Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, 107th in his position and 50th in his state. Marcellus Dial, cornerback, he is 50, 48th um, in Juco. He came from, where did he come? Georgia Military Co College. So he's a JUCO player that we were able to get. Obviously, one of the better ones in the nation in JUCO, 48th nationally. Seventh best in his position in JUCO, and then third in the state of Georgia. And then last, we had offensive tackle Jordan Davis, 125th in his position, 140th in the state of Georgia. 
So yes, going in, recapping all these, I just wanted to give you guys a look at the players that we are bringing into this program. Some guys that you'll be seeing suiting up in the garden and black in the next coming years. But there's still lots of time. There's no need to hit the panic button yet because we still have lots and lots of lots of time for Shane Beamer to come in, pull some more recruits out, hit the Juco realm really hard because we know that there are a lot of good guys there. You can pull some really good players there. Like I'm pretty sure Javon Kinlaw was a Juco guy and you saw what he turned into first overall, uh, first round NFL draft pick. There is still going to be talent on the board for the Gamecocks to go get. And again, I'll say it again. Stars mean nothing when you finally hit the field. It's all about your performance. So there's no need to go into panic mode. Yes, it looks a lot nicer if, let's say, you're Alabama or this Ohio State team. Who, let's say, let's look at there. They got six five stars. They got 14 four stars and four three stars. Alabama's leading with a 319.23 points on 24-7 right now. Obviously, that looks a lot better. Ohio State has five five stars. Georgia has four, LSU has two, Clemson has two. So yes, it looks a lot nicer. It's a lot more pleasing to the eye, but what are you actually able to do with that talent? How are you able to develop that talent and how will these players actually do on the field? Obviously, they've got a bit of a head start because they do have the talent there, but how do you work and train is what really matters. And as long as Shane can go out, grab a few more guys, we've got to fill a lot more position holes. Defense is going to be key. we got to fill a lot more on the defense, especially in the secondary, because we know we are very weak now after losing Shiloh Sanders. We lose JC. We lose Izzy. We lose RJ. We lose a lot of players. It looks like Jamie Robinson's going to come back, which is good news because I really like him. But again, don't panic. Gamecocks fan, take a breather. The 2021 recruiting class will be all right. And even if it isn't as good as we want it to be, just, well, Beamer will come out and he'll pull something in 2022. We already got Gunnar Stockton. Let's pray that we could keep him. But I'm pretty sure Beamer will be able to be just fine recruiting 2021. And then going into 2022, we'll get some good guys. So take a breather, calm down. The class is going to be okay. The Gamecocks are going to be all right. It's just the first steps in going through a new new coaching phase so thank you so much for watching this video guys definitely like down below comment anything about Gamecock football down below like the video and thanks for watching and come back next time